worship service. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims the sand of work. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech for their words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from the wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And that comes from Psalm 19, 1 to 5. Lord, you're welcome into this place. Lord, you're welcome into each of our hearts. Have your way in worship. Order us so that we can experience you. Help us to be attuned to you, O oh God, so that we can worship you and connect to you in worship, to each other and in fellowship and to the community through service. Have your way in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Join us for opening selection. We've come this far by faith by the Trinity Choir. And they're back.
who provides for our needs. For our first time visitors, kindly share your name with us um, so that we may greet you, whether you're in the sanctuary with us on Facebook, the phone, or YouTube. For those worshiping with us on Facebook, I invite you to share this broadcast with your Facebook friends and others so that they can experience the hybrid ministry of Trinity as well. Our announcements are as follows. We will have a congregation forum today following morning worship. You're invited to join us as we share updates, ideas, and where we're headed as a congregation. The 110th Anniversary Committee is taking congregational and all organizational pictures today. Sunday, October 8th, after the congregational forum. So, Carol, if you want your picture to be in the year, um, 110th anniversary yearbook. It is important that all members attend on October 8th in order to, well, that's today, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The session meets on Tuesday, October 10th at 7 p.m. If you have anything to bring before the session, please send it in to the clerk of session or reverence email so that it can be added for Tuesday. Weekly prayers are held on Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Thursday at 2 p.m. via the conference call line, which is 202-926. 1179 access code 963308 hashtag. Bible study is held on Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The National Black Presbyterian Caucus Northeast Chapter will be hosting its fall gathering Saturday, October the 14th, 2023 at 10 a.m. at Elmwood UPC, 135 Elmwood Avenue, East Orange, New Jersey. Theme, welcome, exploring the biblical and practical need for inclusion with special guest, Reverend Sinead Leonard, Director of the Racial Equity and Women's Intercultural Ministries. All are welcome and invited to attend. I pray that you make notes of these announcements and govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, one thing I forgot. Uh, on Friday, we celebrated um, with the NWCP. They honored their pastor, Reverend Dr. Anita Wright. And we congratulate her. Almost to let you know that this month is Pastors Appreciation Month. And we'll be telling you a day where we'll honor her here too. You know, we appreciate her service and we appreciate everything that she has done or is planning to do for us. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes.
just a brief reminder also, I was informed that after all the picture taking and um, meeting, we'll be having some like refreshment in Mahi Hall. <laughs> okay, at this moment we'll turn our attention to hearing our praise report and prayer requests. For those on Facebook, please type your praise and prayer in the comment section. For those on the phone line, you may unmute yourself by pressing star six. I think at one time we said, you know, when you're finished, people on the phone to say next so that the other person won't be talking over each other. Uh, um, so for those in the sanctuary, you have been provided an index card to write your praise report or prayer request. And Ms. Elsa will come around and pick them up if you haven't put them in the basket in the front of the, the sanctuary. And we ask our videographer to read the prayer request from Facebook. Okay, Rev will do it. He's going to do the phone. So, are you ready? Good morning, I'm going to start with our Facebook uh, prayer request. Uh, thanking God for another week. Yes. Uh, also celebrating the birthday of Joanne Weir. All right. We have special prayers and healing for Jeremy. Please, as she suffered a season-ending injury uh, during her soccer game. This week, definitely praying for uh, Miss Jeremy Bell. My dad's here, praying for as well, Mr. Corey Bell. Uh, asking for prayers for citizens of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna add a little to that. Yeah. Asking for uh, prayers for the citizens of Palestine. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, that concludes yeah. right now our prayers from Facebook. Um, we're also asking for prayers for the parish, Maranon, Greek. And do you repeat that? I don't have that. But my service connection is a little slow. Okay, oh, okay. Sorry. Praise for, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Uh, Praise for Parish Maranon, Parish, and Rose families. Okay, thank you. Gaines, 
Stanley Lillian, Diane Harris, Cornel Moss, Israel Flores, Diane Stone, Mrs. Brinton, Juanita Lassane, People of Haiti, World Peace, Brenda Wer Burwell and Family, Anita Hicks, Lord, Lord Hero. Hero. Praise. Ms. Jeanette Oliver, priest prayer from my church, Old First Church in Newark. My um, family. family, bless us all, Lord Hero, praise. Lord, Lord Hero. Hero, our prayers. Asking for healing for Kenny, my aunt, and for our heart. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Help us to show grace, love, and forgiveness to others. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. Praise for Grace Presbyterian Church. Healing prayers for Denver Anglin, fractured foot. Praise God for 93rd birthday of Dorothy May Norton. God, Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. For the yes, Mrs. Mays. Uh, praying for Tab, uh, to ask us to keep his, keep us in his, keep us in his prayers and our prayers as he continues to heal from COVID, and he did say he's feeling much better, so we're happy to hear that. Um, we ask him for prayers for John Ware's Ware's birthday, Elizabeth Ware, and uh, Nancy Torres, and Loretta Tuvera. Uh, certainly asking for prayers uh, for all the children of Trinity, thank you, and, and its leaders, thank you. Um, alone here. Okay. Uh, prayers for Corey Bell or Children Trinity, Jeanette Davis, Irvin Bell, Mary Douglas, Shanae Terry, Lyetta Bacon, Leon and Cassandra Davis and family, Rhonda Davis and family, Ethan Davis and family, Rachel Lugo and family, Patricia Nicholson and family, Meta Barrow, Allison Beasley and Gabrielle Bradley, Faye Frierson, Anita Bush, Baby Sierra, Pastor Wright and family, Eleanor Forbes, Renee Stewart, Errol Stewart, Cheryl Crawford, and family, our country and its leaders. Asking, asking for prayers for Howard uh, family, the Howard family, as they bury uh, their husband, father, and grandfather. We're asking for praise for all our spiritual leaders and mental health professionals. Continue prayers for the Moss family. Asking for prayers for our government leaders in peace and for them to be able to work together. Amen. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Um, certainly we want to ask for prayers for the family of, or excuse me, for the Morgan State University um, campus family yes. and all those who've been impacted by um, certainly by the, the shooting earlier this week, yeah. we want to no, no, it's okay. We want to pray for um, certainly Palestine and Israel and, and the unrest that is there mm -hmm. and pray for all of those who are amongst us that we know that are suffering from sickness and um, grief and so we just want to lift them up before the Lord. Yeah. Lord, Lord hear yeah. our prayers. We pray for those who are on our prayer list, Miss Louise Brenton, David Brenton, Brenda Burwell, Doreen Butler, Kesa Clark, Kyrita Dollop, Kesa Hassenbe, Hyacinth Laughlin, Helen Mack, Laverne Parrish, Bernice Fischel, Peggy Place, Jerry Freitlow, John Rembert, Bernie Walker, Lois Williams. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, you speak to us from smoky mountains and from thunderous lightning. You speak to us through sounds of whisper and the sound of the trumpet. You speak to us from the proclamation of the firmament and from the dripping of honeycomb. You speak to us and we listen, Holy God. So we humble, we humbly ask you once again to speak now, for we are ready. We are witnessing your presence in this world. We stand in awe of your gracious acts of compassion. We are grateful. 
For your providence, provision of me, we say thanks. For those labors of love happening all around us in which we see your spirit shining, we smile and bask in your glory. But for those places in which we see hurt, we ask for your healing. For those places in which we see unfairness, we ask for justice. For those places in which we see pain or loss or distress, we ask for your restoration. For those places in which we see wrongdoings, we ask for, what? for you to see the right to begin right away. We ask for those things because you see them and we know that you see them too. We also know that you see more than we can even begin to imagine. So we pray for your pervasive presence to permeate there as well. Send us out as your people to follow your commands, to show a better way, to live together in community, and to promote human flourishing in this world for everybody. Open our eyes to see what you see and open our hearts to participate in what your spirit is already busy doing within us. May we be bold in our discipleship as we leave here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I'll ask those who are able to stand, please stand and join the choir singing the last prayer. <coughs>
participate in the work of your kingdom, we give you thanks. For the resources with which you have blessed us, we give thanks. Now we offer to you some of what you have given to us. Let our, prayer, our prayers is that we will receive your gifts. Thanks for this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Amen. and the choir will bring us a selection. Good, good father, then Michael Scott Solis. And um, the next voice you will hear after Mr. Michael uh, will be none other than the Reverend Dr. Anita Wright. Thank you, that was amazing. I want to um, dedicate this song to a co-worker, a friend, but actually a brother. He passed away um, a few weeks ago. Same age, we're the same age. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually should have sang this at his memorial, but I didn't. So in honor of him, I want to sing the song, Good, Good Father. Who I am is who I am. 
who I am, is who I am.
This morning, for as long as God allows me to stand before you, I'd like to preach to you from the subject, watchers and workers. Watchers and workers. Yes. Yes. Keep that same energy. Praise the Lord. There is a children's story that was very popular when I was a child. Um, and it's, it seems to have lost some of its popularity over the years. Um, it's the story of the little red hen. Perhaps some of you may have heard of it. In this story, the little red hen decides that she wants to make some bread. But there are a whole lot of steps for her to make this bread. And so she asks her friends um, among the farm animals that live on the farm with her, the dog, the pig, and the cow, to assist her. She finds some grain seeds, and so she asks her friends, who will help me plant the grain? Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Not I, said the cow. And so the little red hen said, okay, fine, I will plant it myself. Throughout the entire season, she watered it, she cared for it, she made sure that it was weeded and all the things were necessary. And at the end of the summer, when it came harvest time, the, um, the wheat had grown up beautifully and it was there and it was ready to be harvested. And so she goes to her friends again, soliciting them, who will help me cut the wheat and take it to the mill? Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Not I, said the cow. That's fine, then I will do it myself. And so she gathers it together, she gets it in the bags, put it in the, puts it in the uh, wheelbarrows or whatever she's carrying it in, and she gets it to the mill. It gets milled up all nicely and wonderfully, and it gets ground into some lovely flour, and she comes home with it. And she asks them, the same way that she began when she wanted to, in the beginning, she says, who? make this bread. Who will help me make the bread? Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the pig. Not I, said the cow. Fine, I'll bake the bread myself. And so she got into the kitchen and she got busy baking the bread. And man, she was kneading the dough and she was rolling it out. She was doing all that she needed to do. She put the yeast in it and let it rise. And, and, and it did, oh my gosh, it was a beautiful loaf of bread. And she puts it in the oven. And then finally it comes out of the oven and she looks at her farmyard friend. She says, who will help me eat this bread? Oh, I will, said the dog. I will, said the pig. I will, said the cow. And she said, lies, you tell. No, you won't. <laughs> or maybe she didn't say lies, you tell. I thought, that's the Anita redaction of the story. But she says, no, you absolutely will not. You were not there. You did not help me plant the seed. You did not help me to take care of it. You did not help me to bring the harvest in. You did not help me even to bake the bread. At no point did you help me. And at no point are you going to share in this bread with me. <laughs> but of God, this story reminds us. It reminds us all that we must be invested in the process if we want to reap the rewards of its benefits. It reminds me, beloved of God, of our text today. In today's text, Jesus saw the condition of the people in the crowds, and he took compassion on them. He knew that they were vulnerable. He knew that, um, that, that they were having a hard time because it says they looked like they were helpless and they were being harassed. And when he saw them, he wanted to ease their hardship. Jesus told the disciples that the harvest was plentiful, but the laborers were few. Therefore, they should pray for the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. In other words, Jesus was saying, listen, there is a lot of work to do, but there are not enough people to do it. Therefore, the disciples should pray for God to send more people to help with the work. Yet as I read this text, I could not help but to remember the story of the little red hen. 
You see, in this children's story, there was a lot of work to be done, but some just sat around and watched instead of lending a helping hand. And if we're true, if we're if we're going to tell the truth about it, I believe that the same is true for the church. There's a lot of work to be done. It takes a whole lot to run a church, a lot of staff to staff the church, a lot of volunteers to help to do the work. It takes a whole lot to be the church in the world. There's a need for more laborers to assist in the work. However, there are also some who are like the dog, the pig, and the cow who see the work but are not willing to help in doing it. And this is what we call watchers. Amen. The watchers, beloved of God, are the people who sit on the sidelines and they point out all of the work that needs to be done. Somebody ought to do this. And somebody ought to do that. Somebody needs to step up and do blase, blase, yada, yada, shay, 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 and the so forth. They point out the things that are lacking. Why you sit back and can often be heard talking about how the church um, how the church used to be and what it is not anymore. We used to have vibrant ministries. We used to do a whole lot of programs and activities. We used to have great discipleship. We used to have this, that, and the other. But we don't anymore. It's a shame. Somebody ought to do something. What are we paying that pastor for? Oh, and while they are making these observations, watchers only talk about it. Yes. They don't lend a helping hand to make the church what it could be. There are many reasons why watchers watch. Yes. They may be tired. Yes. They may be overwhelmed. They may feel unqualified. They may have no passion for the work that needs to be done. They may be lazy or complainers or simply find it easier to see what is missing than to find solutions on how to fix it. Amen. Yet on the other hand, you have workers. Workers are like the little red hen. Workers see what needs to be done they create a task list and they set out to do what is necessary one task at a time. Workers are diligent. Workers show up. Workers lend a helping hand. Workers are usually more focused on doing than talking about what yet needs to be done. And if the truth is told, beloved of God, most people are not, are not either workers or watchers, but are some combination of both. When we examine the text today, Jesus shows us, though, the characteristics of a worker. So what are the characteristics of a worker, you may say? So glad you asked. This text can help us. The first thing that we see in this text is that like Jesus, workers model the work. Look, if you will, in verse 35. In verse 35, it simply says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. In other words, Jesus showed the people how to do the work. Jesus modeled it, not by staying within these walls, but by going from city to city, by going from synagogue to synagogue, by preaching the good news of the gospel, telling them that the Savior, the Redeemer, had come, the Messiah, was amongst them, by healing their sick, by easing the heavy burdens of those who were burdened. Jesus models the work. And beloved of God, I am suggesting to you that if we're going to be workers instead of just watchers, then we must model what needs to be done. It's one thing to sit back and say, Ooh, you know what? Somebody needs to fix the roof. You know what? Somebody needs to paint the walls. You know what? Somebody ought to clean the toilets. You know what? Somebody ought to serve food to those who are hungry. You know what? Somebody ought to go visit the sick. But if everybody talks about what somebody does and nobody does it, then nothing will ever get done. But if we're going to be workers, my sisters and my brothers, my siblings in Christ, 
this. And y'all bear with me because I got my little Bible today. Mm -hmm. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. And like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, Jesus names that there is still yet work to be done. As much as I've been from city to city, as much as I've been from synagogue to synagogue, as much as I've been trying to help those who have been helpless and, and harmed, Jesus, there are still people who are helpless and who are being harassed. There are still people who are vulnerable amongst us. There are still people who are directionless and are walking around like sheep without a shepherd. Let's see if I can help you to understand that we love the 23rd Psalm, don't we? Talking about the great shepherd, mm -hmm. the Lord is my shepherd. But let me help you to understand something about the sheep. Sheep, when they don't have a shepherd, is protected. They are not protected. They are left now subject to the wiles of, the, um, of those who are their natural predators, the wolf. Sheep, when they have no shepherd, have no rest. Because they don't know how to find green pastures. Sheep, when they have no shepherd, they not only have no protection and they have no rest, they also have no provision. Because they don't know how to find the water that is still, that won't scare them and that won't drown them by getting their fur all wet, nor their wool, and nor do they know how to find the pastures that are suitable for them to eat. But sheep, kind of like goat, will eat a pasture until it's all gone. Mm -hmm. And just stay there. Mm -hmm. If they have no shepherd mm -hmm. to lead them into more lush green pastures. Mm -hmm. And Jesus sees the people who are vulnerable, who are a part of the system, and he says they are helpless and they are harassed and they are vulnerable because they are like sheep with no shepherd. Amen. Beloved of God, I would suggest unto you that like Jesus, that if we're going to be workers, we need to be able to name the work. Maybe we don't live in an agricultural society anymore. Maybe we don't understand that, that, that verbiage of sheep and shepherds. Maybe we don't understand that, but we do understand the verbiage of being vulnerable. Who are the vulnerable amongst us? Well, let's name the work those who are homeless, those who have who are unemployed or underemployed, those who can't rub two nickels together to make a dime, those who are trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents, those who cannot afford their medications and have to make the decision of do I get my medicine or do I pay my rent, those who have been living in their homes for so long but the tax bracket has gone so high that they can no longer afford to still live there because the taxes are too high even though the house has been paid for all these years. Beloved of God, these are the vulnerable amongst us. Who are the vulnerable amongst us? Those who have no food to eat. Who are the vulnerable amongst us? Those who need to have um, um, close the education and the success gap. Who are the vulnerable amongst us? Our children who have no one to advocate for them. These are those who are vulnerable amongst us. And Jesus is reminding us, is showing us in this text that if we are going to be workers, we need to identify the work. Yes. Yes. Don't just go out here all half cocked, not knowing what you ought to be doing. Well, I think we ought to be going over here and we ought to sing in the streets. And maybe you should. <laughs> but don't sing to people who are hungry. Oh, the Lord is going to bless you. What? Well, where's the blessing? Are you not the Lord's people? The love of God, the worker, must identify the work that needs to be done. Yes. Yes. Yet one of the characteristics of the workers, if we are going to be a worker, like Jesus, we must model the work. Like Jesus, workers must also name the work. So that we at least know what we're trying to do. But then if we're going to be workers like Jesus, workers identify the need for help. This is one of the hardest things to do sometimes, beloved. Let's look at the text first and then I'll go into what I was going to say. Look at verse 37, if you will. Jesus says, and then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In other words, there's a whole lot of work to be done. We've already named what needs to be done. And as you name the list, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so overwhelming. 
He says, and I understand that there are only a few of you. Therefore, you need to recognize that you need some help. Listen, beloved of God, I would love to be able to think that I can do it all. I would love to think that I am a superwoman, that I am every woman. It's all in me. But here's the reality. Listen, I may be able to bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan and all that good stuff, but sometimes a sister don't want to. Sometimes a sister gets tired. Sometimes a sister might need to call some takeout, call in some takeout, because she just does not feel like it. And the reality is, if ain't nobody there to help me, then I'm just all left and lost alone, and I got to deal with all this stuff all on my own. Beloved of God, I'm simply using this um, analogy to help us to understand that even when we know all that needs to be done, you need to understand your limitations. You need to understand what you are able to do and what you are not able to do. You need to understand that, you know what, um, yeah, I could do it all, but why should I? Because if I do it all, I'm going to be burnt out, and I'm only going to be able to do this for a short amount of time, as opposed to being able to be in this for the long haul. And so sometimes you need to ask for some help. And that's one of the hardest things for us to do. Sometimes one of the hardest things for us to do is to admit that we need some assistance. To admit that even though I have the uh, capability to do it, I don't have the capacity to do it. I am able to do all these things individually. I am not capable of doing all of them together. Sometimes you need to ask for some help. Listen, you notice that we have our, our, um, our liturgists, our elders back in the pulpit with me because the sister needed some help. Just saying. Sometimes it is important for us, not only after we've named the work, to say, listen, I need some help to do the work. This is what Jesus models for the people, for the disciples. He says, look around you. There is a huge harvest just ready and waiting to be harvested, but you need some help. You can't do it all on your own. And this leads us, beloved of God, to the next thing because like Jesus, if you're going to be a worker, workers recruit workers to help you with the work. Mm -hmm. Now I know I need some help. Now I've got to recruit some help. Jesus tells the disciples in verse 38, therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers. In other words, Lord, help us to get some people in here to do what we need to do. God, help us to be able to do your work. We see all the work that needs to be done, but help us. Number one, we pray, Lord, send some people. Number two, we go out and get some people. Number three, that's just what we do, right? Um, and sometimes, beloved of God, we sit in the house of God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to say what it is. We sit in the house of God and say, oh, oh, we used to be such a thriving church. Yes, yes, we did. All oh, these views used to be packed from front to back. Oh, my goodness. And, and yet now we don't have anybody in here. And my question to you is, when was the last time you invited somebody to come? Oh, I ain't mad at me. It's, it's, it's the idea of, well, we don't have anybody. Did you invite anybody? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to step all over your toes. Do you come? That got somebody real good. <laughs> it's the question. Do we come? How can we invite somebody to a place that we don't frequent ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got on point, so maybe, maybe that, my, my toys are a little bit, so maybe, you know, don't, don't worry about it. We all hurt in here. <laughs> the question becomes, why would someone, hmm, why would someone frequent a place that you yourself are not willing to go? No. I'm not going to tell you to come over to my house and have dinner with me if I can't, if I can't stand to eat my own cooking. <laughs> what, sense is, what sense does that make? And we say yet, we, oh, but we want our church to grow. But have we invited anybody? Have we shared the love of Jesus with anybody through our actions and even, if necessary, our words? So if we're going to be workers, we do need to recruit some workers, right? 
Christ has called us to be his ambassadors in the world. Beloved of God, let me bring this thing to a close and give you the last thing. You're like, really? It's one more point. There is one final thing. It's like, is that not yet enough? There is one thing because this is the thing that will help us. If we are going to be workers, if you ultimately keep reading and you go into chapter 10, in chapter 10, what you find is that Jesus sends the disciples out two by two. He sends them out to do the work. Therefore, the ultimate characteristic of a worker versus a watcher is that a worker works. A worker does the work. A worker does the work of the one who has sent them while it is day, day, because they know that the night comes and no one can work. That's just the scripture. Um, a worker works because they understand that even if they get tired and weary, God will give them rest and then God will allow them to mount up on wings like an eagle. That's just another scripture from Isaiah. A worker understands that they work, that they work not to receive the accolades and the applause of the people, not to be recognized by the people. Yes, that's good, that's fine, that's wonderful, and we appreciate it, but a worker works because they understand that ultimately they are doing this unto the Lord. I'm not working for you, but I'm working to hear my Lord and my Savior say, well done, my good and my faithful servant. You see, beloved of God, I cannot hear well done for being good and faithful if I ain't good and I ain't faithful. Beloved of God, I cannot hear God say, you've done a good job and I've done nothing. Beloved of God, I hear God say, whoa, come on up and take your rest. If God says, you have been resting the whole time, you've been sitting down there, I'm going to need you to get up and actually do something. But love of God, we're talking about workers versus watchers. And yes, sometimes we get tired and weary and we need the Lord to strengthen us. But that, what I would suggest to you, if you get tired, stop and slow down a little bit. Take a little bit of a rest. But don't you quit. Beloved of God, if you get overwhelmed, ask God to strengthen you and take on God's burden as opposed to your own and still get back in it and keep working. Beloved of God, if you find yourself wanting to quit because you bad enough, then I suggest that you listen and look up Jeremiah who said, I wanted to quit and I decided in myself that I was not going to speak anymore. to a worker is to understand who it is who's calling you to do the work. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
It is not Pastor Wright, Dr. Wright, Reverend Wright, that woman up there who's just been talking all this time. It is not me. But I, what I suggest to you is that it is the God in me mm -hmm. that invites you to join in the work. It is the prayer of God, show me where you're working and allow me to join you in it. And many of us have been praying that prayer, and God's been showing us all over town, all over the world. Like, yeah, no, God, not that. No, God, give me something else. I don't want to do that. God, could you give me something else? Just one more time, because I really don't want to do that. And God is saying, listen, I have shown you. I'm sure when I went down that list, that litany, that each of you saw something, whether I named it or didn't, didn't something rose up in you. As far as something that needs to be done. You were probably saying, listen, oh, you know what? The church needs this. And then, you know what? The church needs that. It needs a youth ministry. It needs a children's ministry. It needs a, a choir, a youth choir. It needs a, a this and a that. We need some more usher, though. We need some more. We need, we need, we need. Something came up in your spirit. I would suggest to you, suggest to you the love of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever you heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, but in all genuineness, it begins by being in relationship with Jesus. That's right. That's right. See, I don't care who's telling me what. If I don't know you, I ain't going over there to do that. Think about it. If just some strange Joe Blow off the street asks you to do something, how likely are you to do it? You might. If it's a one-off, but to do it on a regular basis, you probably will not. And so I'm inviting you to come into relationship with the one who will be with you, who will strengthen you, who will guide you, who will show you, who has modeled for you already. Jesus the Christ. He's already modeled for you the work because Jesus himself said, listen, he saw the people and they were helpless and they were being harassed. And so he had compassion on them. Beloved of God, you do know that Jesus saw us. And had compassion on us. Yes. Yes. Jesus, while he was sitting in his home in heaven, mm -hmm. looked down and saw us and saw that there was a need because we were like sheep without a shepherd, just running around, um, running amok. And yet he says, Father, I'll go down. I will model for them love. I will model for them service. But I will model for them also Submission to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus is inviting you today to come into relationship with him, to receive the grace that he has extended to us when he died on the cross, yes. to receive the gift of eternal life by believing in him, just as God raised him from the dead and raises us too. That's the first invitation today. But the second invitation is similar to it, but kind of different. Perhaps you're already in relationship with Jesus, and you need a church home. And the Lord is leading you to become a part of the Trinity Church family. If that's you today, I invite you to come. You may come to the front. You may raise your hand where you are. You may email me at pastor-trinitymtc at comcast.net. You may... Um, Contact me with a direct message on Facebook, however you do it, but you are invited to respond, to say, okay, the Lord is leading me. I, I feel something saying that this is the place that I need to be. That's something, by the way, is the Holy Spirit. But, you know, I feel like I need to be here. Amen. You are welcome. welcome. You are so welcome. You're like, but listen, Reverend, I don't know, because this is the third invitation. I invite you to become a worker and not just a watcher. Well, Reverend, y'all don't have the ministry that I'm gifted in. Okay. So, so start it. What can you do? I'm in a season of yes. Well, Pastor, can we? Everything that comes through the session is almost a yes directly. If you want to try, we're not saying no. So what is God stirring up in your heart? in your mind to do that's not already being done or what's already being done that you feel like you can help 
in doing. God is calling us from the sidelines, from just watching to working. Amen. 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 This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 While you're standing, I am inviting you to share in our Apostles' Creed. We are a creedal church here at Trinity. And so our Apostles' Creed it can be found if you don't know it by heart. Um, or if you're like me and you know it by heart and then add a few prepositions and throw everybody off. Um, you can read along with us in the blue hymnal, blue Presbyterian hymnal, in the seat pocket in front of you on page 14. We will be reading the um, traditional version. In that, though, there will be a couple of changes. We say Holy Ghost instead of Holy Spirit. We say Holy Universal Church as opposed to Holy Catholic Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, I will start us off and just to kind of set the pace and you can just join right on in page 14. Is everybody there who needs to be there who's going with us? Everybody ready? Amen. Don't look around. I can see. You don't have to see. Who don't know? Who are looking for it? <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> I am. I'm on enough one. I didn't get enough sleep. Gotta <laughs> rest. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us then pray and receive our benediction. God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for the challenging word of whether we're watchers or workers. We pray, O oh God, that wherever we find ourselves, that you would stir up in us to be workers and to do the work of you who has sent us. God, to work as long as we have strength in our body. And so, God, we pray that you would bless us now. For those of us who are trying to resist this work, we're like, well, I just don't know. I don't know where to start, so I will do nothing. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you would help them to move past that. Yes, God, for those who see so much to do and just are overwhelmed, I pray, oh God, that you would help them to show them where their gifts are best suited. God, I pray that you would give all of us a willing heart, oh God, and willing hands, oh God. God, give us strength in our bodies. God, give us energy. God, give us compassion. Not to say, I've done my time, now I'm going to let the young folks come behind us. But God, to realize that as long as we have breath in our bodies, there is still work for us to do. And so, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, oh God, for the privilege that you have called us to join you in this work. I thank you, oh God, that you have allowed us to see the harvest fields that are so full and ripe. And God, I pray that you would help us to even begin by simply opening our mouths and sharing with people the gospel of Jesus Christ and inviting them to come. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling, who is able to present us faultless before God's throne, to the only wise God, our heavenly parent, be glory, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, amen. 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 God bless you. Go in peace or sit in your seats, whatever you got to do. If you're going to stay for our congregation.